I want you to take a moment and reflect on your day today. Did you have breakfast? Did you enjoy your breakfast? Was it pleasant? Well, if you skip today, I hope by the end of this talk, I can convince you to never do that again. I didn't follow my own advice. My first two years of college, 95% of my meals looked something like this. This was my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner. Now, there wasn't anything out of my control stopping me from living a happy and healthy lifestyle. My parents were able to cook food at home, and they drop it off for me, living one hour away. I was financially stable enough to afford food, and I lived in a restaurant-filled city of Atlanta, so there's restaurants everywhere, and food was accessible. However, as my school started to get busier, as it does as college students when we have so many responsibilities, my assignments started to stack up, and my relationships personally became more demanding, and I started to fall behind in school. I couldn't keep up with everything, so I started delaying my meals. I ate later in the day, and sometimes I'd start skipping meals, and so I'd make them up by eating one large meal a day. Eventually, it progressed into me not eating at all for that entire day. When this happened, I had to tell myself, okay, something needed to change. This wasn't a question of willpower. I needed to drastically change what I was doing if I wanted to get better. By the end of my sophomore year, I felt like a skeleton. My hair was thinning and becoming brittle. I couldn't fit into my clothes properly. I had really bad acne. And I was really afraid to look at myself in the mirror. These negative thinking patterns were constantly berating my mind. And maybe you can relate. You give yourself one negative thought out of a hundred positive ones, and your brain focuses in on that one negative thought and replays it over and over again. It kind of felt like this. I tell myself things like, I'm not eating enough, I skipped my meal again today, what am I going to do? I'm never going to get better. There must be something wrong with me. When my brain slipped into these negative thinking patterns, I had to find a way out. Foods that used to be appetizing to me were not so appetizing anymore. Things like my Publix's key lime pie or even Studio Ghibli dishes were disgusting to think about eating, chewing, and pleasantly enjoying them. I had to drastically change the way that I was living. Because while this was working in the short term, long term, this was not sustainable. And I knew that my lifestyle was quite literally unsustainable. One day, after school, I came home a bit early, around 2.30. I was supposed to be on campus till 9, but I didn't have enough energy inside me to stay the rest of the day. So I came home, and I sat on my bed, and I tried to eat a Chick-fil-A sandwich. I say tried because I only got halfway full, halfway through, before the other half of the sandwich seemed less tempting. I pushed myself to take one more bite, though, but the squishy texture of the bread and the oily chicken just made me feel nauseous, so my body spit it out. It was at that moment when my body rejected food like that, when the sweaty palms were gripping my hair, and when my tears were pooling onto my shirt, that I knew that no one was going to come save me. If I wanted to get better, I'd have to fight this battle, this battle between your mind and your body. And if I wanted to prevent the tube from feeding me, I'd have to win this battle. Fighting your body is a lonely process. It's you against you. Because no one can eat for you. No one can be disciplined and committed for you. They can't love you for you. And while you can be taught these things, you have to learn how to do them on your own. 
Habits were the culprit behind keeping me from getting better. It takes 18 to 254 days to form a new habit and 66 days for it to become automatic. My poor eating habits consisted of me not eating on time, not eating enough at the wrong time, and slipping myself into these negative thinking patterns over and over again. Habits are also deeper than your actions. They're a part of your, they're a part of your identity, who you believe you are. And it's a two-way street. Your habits will influence who you are, and your identity will influence the habits that you keep. My poor eating habits were also a result of deeper habits and beliefs that I believed about myself, at least who I thought I was. And in reality, I was an incompetent college student who was only self-sufficient inside the classroom. I was a weak girl for thinking that she was strong, for fighting against her own body. And I was a bad daughter for lying to my parents about every meal that I ate to try to convince them that I was healthy. The consequential effects of my stress, anger, and disappointment, and all these other negative thoughts were continuously compounding on one another because my poor eating habits persisted for over two years. So these bad habits were ingrained into my psyche and very difficult to change. So to combat this, I relied on three principles I believe anyone can use to not only change your habits, but also to mitigate the challenge of fighting against yourself when you start. First, you must ask for help. It takes strength to accept that you have a problem that you're struggling with. And it takes bravery to share that struggle with someone else and to ask them to help you. Reaching out for help is not a sign that you're weak. It's a sign that you're smart and that you're self-aware enough to accept that you have a problem and to tell yourself, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel lost. And um, can you please help me? Negative thinking starts with a trigger. And when you're triggered into this thought, it's difficult to make a decision on what you have to do. So asking for help can be very beneficial. For me, I reached out to a nutritionist at Georgia State, and we worked for two to three weeks on developing meal plans that would help me meet my caloric requirements and manage my busy school schedule at the same time. Though help like this is rarely useful if you don't know how to incorporate it into your life. So secondly, you must actively choose to change. I say actively because it's not enough to simply want to change. Choices are the subunits of change. And we have to start with the small ones. So with me, that was with a glass of milk, um, a banana, and a Nature Valley bar whose crumbly mess often symbolized just how badly my life was falling apart at this point. When you want to become a stronger athlete, you make your workouts more challenging and powerful. So in a similar way, to make my eating habits, to exercise them, I made it difficult. So I would combine meals together. So I'd eat like a banana and then Nutella toast. I eat heavier foods like pastas and meats. And I'd push myself to finish everything on the plate, especially when I felt like I couldn't eat anymore. Lastly, you have to focus on what you're doing right. Because battling through your bad habits, there's going to be times where you feel lost or incapable, or you don't know what you're doing again. And focusing on what you're doing right can help you get through that. And here's a little secret. If you try to look for the negative, you are going to find it. You need to focus on where you're going, what you've been doing right, and keep moving forward. So when this happened with me, I would write them down. So I'd, la I'd allow these thoughts to come, but I'd rationalize them. So I would turn them into something hopeful and even sometimes provide a solution. So for example, if I said, oh my gosh, I messed up again, I skipped my lunch, I'm not going to get any better, and I still look so skinny. I changed that into, okay, you skipped one meal, 
let's try to get the next one. And just because you don't see progress doesn't mean you're not making it. So keep going and keep trying. And that's what I did. I tried again the next day and the days after until trying became doing and doing became my habit. Now, I, all, I have a confession to make. I'm still working on this, right? And I know we all here are working on something within ourselves, and we're trying to get better every single day. So if you just do 1% better every single day for 365 days, you are going to get 3,680% better by the end of the year. So I promise whatever you're doing is adding up. And these habits that I talked about, the principles that I talked about, you can use to help you make those changes in your life and to mitigate the challenge of how difficult it can be. Now I eat much healthier. This is what it looks like. I can fit into my clothes, my hair is soft, and I'm just as obsessed with food. Now, for you, where can you start? Just reflect on your life. Start with your screen time, your transcript, your personal or professional relationships, or like me, start at your pantry. Think about the person your habits say you currently are. And think about the person that you want to be, what kind of habits they have, and how you can get those. Write them down and start working on them. Like I said, you might not see progress, but that doesn't mean you're not making it. So start today, and I promise you, you'll thank yourself in about 254 days. Thank you.